there. Yes, look, everybody, it's the it's the great Harry Barnett is here. Fo follow him at the great eight. No, no, yes, the great HB. I did. Oh, that. you messed up my introduction, dummy. Uh, 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 you did that on purpose. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, such a caliber guest of, of yours, truly uh, a, a guest of the year. Some may even say a uh, Hall of Famer. But yes, that is right. The uh, first and only Hall of Fame inductee for HIC Talk Radio, the great Harry Bonnet, has returned right here to the Craig Lagan Show on HIC Talk Radio of the VOC Nation. And, well, he's not going to introduce himself. I'll just, I'll give it back to this dummy that failed to introduce such a uh, legendary star such as myself. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anyway, it's the the great knob, uh, HB, and of course, the historian, the professor on the show, Craig Lagans. You can follow him at Craig Lagans. See, it's much easier. No gimmick there. Craig is just Craig. Um. So, oh, good. He's got. Uh, good. He's gonna hit me with a plastic hammer. Is it plastic or pop? What is it made of? It's a uh, PLA, then. It's a plastic, which I could uh, quite easily go and get something like carbon fiber or something that wouldn't break on impact and, you know, it would probably hurt you a little bit. I mean, I, I know you bruise easily. I know you're uh, probably a, a about an hour away. I know you're probably about an hour away from uh, getting the, the, the dreaded virus. No, um, probably, you know, copyright, copyright problems mean that we can't actually call it by the, the correct name. I mean, I'll, I'll call it the CV virus. Are we not allowed to call it coronavirus? Well, you know, that's a, a registered alcoholic beverage, Dan, so you can't actually call it by its <laughs> real name. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and call it the uh, known alcoholic beverage virus. Um, but yeah, I know you're susceptible to illness, so uh, I don't want you to get the sneezes. Uh, I wouldn't want you to um, <laughs> sneeze on your... I wouldn't want you to sneeze on your sandwich, and please do use your sleeve or a tissue to uh, wipe your hand, uh, wipe your nose. Yeah, <laughs> and don't be afraid of social interaction, Dan. It's fine. No, it's not fine. It's no. What a great lead-in. It's not fine, Harry. I mean, I'm not like panicking, like everybody kill themselves and yes, burn the houses down. And yes, sir. no, I'm not. It, no, I'm not. It, it's it, it, listen. I don't want WrestleMania canceled. Wonderful segue by our, uh, the great uh, Knob. Um, Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer Knob. <laughs> it's 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 not a. It's, I, I'll take I don't, a backhanded compliment. That's thank fine. you. You damn right you will. Uh, so I don't want it to be canceled, but um, it's not a good idea right now. It's just my feeling. You know. Did you I've introduce been, Craig then? I didn't introduce Craig. I said Craig at Craig Lagans. What this are you doing? This show. You should introduce him uh, properly. It, I, honestly, I don't have any problem with the way Dan introduced me. Thank uh, you. Harry. Okay, as, long as, okay. as long as it's okay with you, Craig. It is. And congratulations on your Hall of Fame uh, induct induction. Uh, I'm very proud of you. I've heard I it, appreciate that. I heard it got some Thanks. backlash from the uh, founder of our show. <laughs> If I had the ability of showing the message that he sent me, it, it was um, very mean. It was very old. It was very mean. Yeah. Very old. He's like 30. He's, again, he's like three years older than me. But very mean and old. Very uh, mean and old. Big to get back to your original point, Dan, I, I, I don't want WrestleMania to be canceled or postponed, but it looks like it is going that way. I mean, huge festivals already. Have been uh, been canceled. Uh, South by Southwest, Coachella, Pearl Jam tour, uh, the two hundred fifty year tradition of the Irish Parade right here in Philadelphia has been postponed. Well, I mean that's well. been post that's been postponed because the last time it wasn't postponed, a bunch of people died. <laughs> like they were yeah. like, "Go ahead, just do it." It was like, "No, it's probably not a great idea." Yeah, he's but right I, as well. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know Italy is shut down entirely. The entire country is. Uh, but I guess, Dan, your your most pressing you know, concern uh, of all these cancellations is, of course, the Genesis tour and what that means oh, to no. you. No, no, I'm not a, at all worried about that because, uh, again, it's not happening until next year. Okay. So I'm not really worried get about canceled. that. It'll get canceled then. Don't worry, Dan. No, well, I mean, you know. The, the I mean, I'm not going to be upset and have a hissy fit and project onto other people like you did, Harry. 
uh, they'll, 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 they'll just cancel the West Virginia portion of their tour. And they're not coming to West. <laughs> they won't be coming to West Virginia. Home. They're not coming anywhere near here. Trust me. <laughs> uh, but 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 realistically, though, if if WrestleMania is indeed off the books uh, for uh, for April, um, what uh, what are uh, well? Here's here's what, what I wanted to say to? first. Uh, I, I'm not I, I'm not here to pan- panicking. Doesn't do anything anyway. No. Um, but if you read the right, if you read the experts and not people on Twitter, there should be a little bit more being done about it. Wait, a little experts bit. on on Twitter? No, no, no. You mean it the was... people I've been reading on experts? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> you didn't know that? <laughs> no, no, Harry. The people on Twitter are not. There if are my ex- headphones weren't connected to my hat. I would throw my hat down on the floor right now. Just lift the headphones and throw the hat. No, I like it. Uh, uh, I, I was going to say, it's a very it. nice hat. I want it to cover the boldness, you know. You're bald? I'm a Hall of Famer too, but you don't see me bragging about that. <laughs> no, not at you all. Know. There's another picture of the ring that he printed out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, uh, you're bald? Uh, prestig- a prestigious Hall of Fame company actually sent me that. And, uh, you know, yeah, cost a lot of money. Anywho. It took a long time to make it. Anywho. <laughs> Anywho. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it, it'll be nice to get ahead of it. Like uh, six weeks ago when we knew it was coming and nobody did anything. Not placing the blame into any... It, 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 all the stuff on Twitter about whose fault it is, and Republican, Democrat, blah, blah, blah. stop it. Stop it. This is a problem worldwide. It is a pandemic. It, you, yeah. the, it was given the official name pandemic today. Mm-hmm. Try to head this off. Lots of people are going to die. Lots of people are going to get sick. Now here's the thing. Not everybody who gets sick either feels sick and or dies. But there are people who are going to be susceptible to fatal uh, consequences if it's not nipped to the bud now. Now, is closing WrestleMania a solution? Closing WrestleMania or any of the... The NHL is going to start... Uh, well, some of the teams in the NHL have already started saying home games are not going to be attended. Except for essential personnel. Um, they've already cut off locker rooms in all the four major sports in the States. Um, minor league teams are starting to uh, see a drop off of attendance anyway, so they're going to start uh, saying just don't come. Um, as you said, uh, Craig, a lot of the festivals and tours are shutting down to get ahead of this. Um, sp- <laughs> social, what do they call it? Social E3 shows? as well. That's right. E3 got canceled too. That's true. Um, yep. Now, I know that might upset you, and I really do, because when you close, here's the thing, closing down WrestleMania is a bigger problem, because you literally have five days of events, Primetime Pro Wrestling's doing one, that lead up to WrestleMania and after WrestleMania, so there's a lot of wrestlers. Do you think the indie stuff will, will get uh, go down as well, though? Because I have a feeling like they'd carry on anyway. <sighs> It's their biggest crowd. It's their biggest crowd of the year. So, I mean, they could, but at the same time, they're what makes them so special. Uh, just because the WWE has their WrestleMania week, you're still this is a still a public gathering of yeah. in uh, a crowd of people and in an arena that could that's just as susceptible as any other major arena um, to you know this pandemic. So. I can see why they would go on anyway. Say, hey, it's WrestleMania week, or the show must go on. But you know, well, here's the thing: as yeah. of right, as of right now, uh, nothing's canceled. Uh, the logistical the Tampa, as I showed down earlier. Yeah, yes, they they tweeted at this moment or at this time, nothing's canceled, and I don't want it to be. But you have to take into account. I see people being defined on Twitter and on social. Well, I'm going to do this anyway. And I'm going to do this anyway. Um, that's not helpful because that's how it spreads. You got to stop it. Th- that's not helping anybody. You, it, the selfishness I'm hearing, Harry. I'm not talking about you at all. So I don't really give me a Wait, second. Wait, what did I do? Nothing. That's what I'm saying. I don't have coronavirus. I'm immune to all known diseases. Y- yes, your blood is supposedly going to help us all. Correct. No, 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 no. Get the quote right. Quote, uh, uh, Craig, do you remember the quote? Is your, 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 uh, the quote about your blood or the quote about? That my blood is the key. Yes, his blood is the key. Oh, yeah, you said Craig that? got the quote right, see? Yeah, yeah but I... Craig listens, Dan. 
I don't Craig, listen to this you. Is why Craig is the star I don't of listen show. to you at all. And that is why Craig is the star of the show because Craig. Because oh, he doesn't listen. To this he is the correct. To you. This is how gotcha. a podcast works. You have the host listen. You don't just talk. You have the host listen, and this is why Craig is the star of the show. What? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Great one. Um, Dan, going forward with uh, the many cancellations, are we going to see this permeate into the, the live shows on Raw? Here's and... what, this is what I was saying. For a little while, yeah. you're going to have to start sh- shutting stuff down. Uh, it's not a question uh-huh. of when, if it's a question of when. I'm not an expert. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I've been reading from people who have made a living on studying diseases and viruses and how they spread. This is a thing that needs to happen. It should have happened before. Mm-hmm. Um, once they started shutting uh, stuff down in in China, you saw the numbers taper off. Oh, you got a novel idea that is. I left the camera on you, so it looks stupid. And nobody sees what I'm saying. Um, I there was two examples of people who went a uh, uh, countries who went into shutdown where the numbers tapered off. Italy is going to start seeing that as well mm-hmm. because Italy said nope. It's, Italy also has a large population of uh, old elderly people, Dan. So, yes, um, elderly Italian people. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you, you know, knew that. Not like... <laughs> but yeah, elderly people. So you know, when you get up there to towards Dean's age, you're gonna get. Sick. He's like forty. He's not. <laughs> He's not old. But Dan, Dan, look, look. Let's let's cut this all back. Dial it back a little bit. All right. Uh, you say you're not panicking. You say you're you're not uh, worried. But the fact of the matter is, I didn't say I was not worried. I didn't I said, say well, I was not worried. You don't need to say you're not worried. You can see it in your beady little eyes. That yeah, you're I have beautiful <laughs> eyes, buddy. The fact of the matter is, this to every degree, this is overblown. And don't make that make me sound. Oh no 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 no! Stop your stupid um, hand moving and face stuff. Listen. <laughs> Yesterday. It is overblown. It is a, a terrible disease, a terrible virus that is um, sickening and killing people. I'm not doubting that. But to the degree of shutting places down, that's unnecessary. Can I? Uh, precautions. Uh, da, 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 da. No, no, precautions my go. show. My no, show. Dan, Hold on. Wait. Dan, let, I'll, I'll let you finish in a second. Point. I just want to preface this by saying I hope to God you're right, but continue. Okay. Precautions do need to be taken. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. The safety of, let's say, performers in the uh, instance of concerts or sporting events does need to be taken into account. Okay. So overreaction is understandable to the point where, okay, you've got panic buyers. Not necessarily um, that. Not necessary. Right. Because you're going out panicking buying. You're buying all these things when you're meant to. That I agree with. For, yes, correct. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yes, I work in a store, and we've had certain things that haven't been in for a, a while, just because of people coming in and buying up everything. Let me take a wild guess: hand sanitizer, soap, and toilet paper. Uh, that and pasta and pasta. Oh, I, okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of other things as well, but complete overreaction. Taking something like, um, let's say, a WrestleMania. That's a, a, this is a, a very once in a lifetime kind of thing because WrestleMania has sure. never been stopped in the history of WrestleMania. Sure. But then you have situations where, uh, and this is where people are going to be like, oh, boo. What's the disease rate over in Saudi? They could take WrestleMania over to Saudi. People are going to hate it, but hey, it still means that WrestleMania is going ahead. I know the attraction with WrestleMania for the most part isn't, oh, look, it's WrestleMania. Let's watch. It's oh, you know, big trip, go to this state, you know, all these people from around the world are going to sit. Right. Uh, and obviously seeing the, the smaller shows. Sure. So, you know, overreacting to a point that, hey, if this gets cancelled or at the very least postponed, I'm not being funny, you could quite easily move that elsewhere to somewhere where, you know, you've got less um, less of an outbreak numbers, even if it's another country. Right. You move it, you make precautions. This is a very sort of touch and go situation. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So, you know, but to the point where you're going to have empty, um, you're going to have things where uh, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, things like that. If you're going to shut off shows, 
take it to the performance center. You don't that's what I was saying. Like that. Yes, dude. And that's what was the next point I was going to make. Uh, is the if I, if I just finish one one last little thing before uh, you do, Dan? Sure, sir. You call me Danny? One... No, I said Dan. Oh, okay. I can call you Danny if you like. I'll, no, I'll thank you. Write it with a little Y. Please don't. Um, with with the little heart doing it. <laughs> but the one that that really gets me that I've seen throughout social media that yeah, a lot of people are joking about, but it is a serious thing now. Is uh, co human contact. People complain about human contact um, when this is massively over overblown. I looked on the NHS report for um, uh, the corona, the the uh, known alcoholic beverage virus, um, the actual symptoms and what to watch out for, and it says don't make contact with someone who is clearly unwell. Right. So let's say uh, you, me, and Craig are in a room together, and you know I haven't seen either of you in uh, two years. And you can Which is a see, delight for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, me and Craig will have a good time because we're we're good people, and you know, you're just a neck bearded mark. Um, I, have a piece of, I have a piece of crap. I know. We'll we'll walk into a room, and you can clearly and Dan, this isn't a knock on, but I'll, I'll do it the other way around. Hold on, what are you me. laughing at, Craig? <laughs> He's laughing at your neck beard and the fact. I that don't have mark. a beard <laughs> or beard. <penis. laughs> Someone sounds, Someone sounds defensive. Someone sounds defensive. Just it, finish I mean, your point because it's a good Beatus point. Is acting up, but yeah, that's um, not how diabetes works. I walk into a room, and just to stop Dan's feelings getting hurt, Craig's the one that's sick. You can clearly see Craig sick. So, <laughs> you know, I, I love Craig dearly. He's, he's a dear friend, but I'm not. I'm not going anywhere near him. I'll stand at a distance. I'll wave. I'll say, you know, hey, Craig, how you doing? But I'm not going anywhere near him. But I see Dan isn't sick, not in the least, but I wouldn't touch Dan if he was healthy, but I'll go and shake his hand, you know, <laughs> and might pat him on the head like a good boy. <laughs> but the fact that I'm out is... I hate you so much. The, 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 the guidelines out there say don't touch someone who is sick. Don't make contact. Don't go afraid of not going out into the public. If no. you're healthy, if you're healthy, live your life. Live but your life. Dan, I, think I know you're... you stay indoors anyway. I know you're a hermit. But go outside and enjoy I, your life. I if Don't I showed you worry you. If I showed you my Fitbit numbers, it would blow your mind my fat ass moves as much as it does. Did the beaters get you up to about three steps? <laughs> I don't know. If you want to be a smart ass about it, hold on. And if you do that, I'll show you my numbers and I uh, saw your numbers the other day, it was very good. What, the twenty one thousand? Yeah. So you should. It's brilliant. I did it's wonderful. Do you want to see my steps from today? I did uh, five point eight miles today. Yeah, there you go. That's that my down a little lower. Today. Zero, zero. zero. It's tired. <laughs> the day started. The day started half an hour ago, Dan. Oh, that's right. You just started there. Yeah. So uh, I'm guessing you turned the sensitivity up on your phone and did no. The I have first. a no, no. I just am not as. Fat as people think I am. I just like to eat a lot of food. I didn't say you're fat. I just said you had to be. I said I was fat. <laughs> Will you finish your point, please? Oh, I finished my point. I was oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> my counterpoint was is I'm more worried about people who are not sensible and will yeah. go to these things even though they're sick. Yeah. And it is airborne. Like, you get it through <laughs> the air, too, if you're just going, Ugh! and you're standing next to them in the room. You don't have to touch them to get it. You know I, you know who I think would do that? Dean? No, I think Mark Angel would do that. He He's the sort of Mark that would do it. You know, that's I, Mark with a K, uh, even though he spells it with a C. With a C. Um, I can't he, say he, anything. He's the, kind of, he's the kind of Mark that would uh, say, oh, you know, I'm going to WrestleMania anyway, because, uh, you know, he, he leaves for <laughs> Florida on the 31st of March. Like a dick when I tell him that's the day I turn up. Um, <laughs> if he thinks I'm uh, making him anything, then he can, uh, you know, he can kiss the uh, smallest part of Hornswoggle's ass when I uh, have him um, face him finally. Isn't that but, awesome? Yeah, he's the kind of mark that would actually go out there and, um, you know, go and uh, actually give it to catch it and give it to someone because you know he's got to go to WrestleMania every year. I am. I'm not. No comment on that. I can't say anything because I said a bunch of stuff last week and he just no-sold me. I'm not important. Well, Mark doesn't no-sell me because I actually talk to him regularly and I, I um, you know. The last time I talked to him was when somebody came out as a pedophile and then he won't talk to me. 
<laughs> That's a, haven't heard of him since. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh I, know, I know who you mean, yeah. Yeah, that his, yeah. his name rhymes amazing. with... That's an, amazing, that's an amazing story, Dan. Yes, it's an amazing story, and it's his name rhymes with Dory? <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna have another cookie. Especially. Have another cookie. Craig, Craig, would you have? Would you like? One? Craig, would you like one, to? Craig. Why don't you add to this cut? What do you think? You heard? Uh, I. You know what? I agree. I'm gonna say this before you go. I, mm -hmm. I agree with Harry. I like. I like that idea better. Because I don't like. You agree with me that Mark's gonna be the Mark that gives it to someone? Absolutely, like <laughs> absolutely. He's from South Jersey, and he stayed there. He'll probably drag it off. No, um. I, 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 Dan, I don't know. I, I thought it was a good no, idea. You're to be, Dan. You're be, Dan. We're not Dan. I thought it was a good idea to be proactive, but I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or dreams. Uh, to answer your question um, from earlier, Craig, mm -hmm. there it is a logistical mm -hmm. nightmare, not only on the WWE's part, <laughs> but on all these indie companies' parts. To cancel these shows, I don't know. No, not all of them will. No, not abs absolutely not. Uh, but I will add this. Vince will be defiant to the end, but if the city of Tampa tells him to take a hike, Craig, he's going to take a hike. He's not going to have a oh, choice. Yeah, he's not going to have a choice. I, I'm sure that because he is Vince McMahon, he has a contingency plan in mind. Uh, I hope so in case. Uh, as Ironically, as we're talking right now, the, uh, the current version of W. WWE NXT is taking place in the Performance Center right now as we speak. Oh, sure. So they can continue to have uh, matches there, or uh, with or without a crowd. Um, so wait, I thought they do it in full sale. No, well, t uh, they do, but uh, it's, it's connected tonight, tonight, Harry. Right now, it's in um, it's in the Performance Center. Oh wow! Yeah. Interesting. So maybe that's their way of practicing or having some dr uh, dress rehearsals, as it were. And, pro and this may be where they're going to be going forward for as long as the uh, pandemic lasts. But uh, they're already in, they're in the Performance Center right now, so uh, they could stay there for the foreseeable future. Well, I'll tell you one thing uh, to both of you is uh, a lot of these shows, I can't speak for NXT because I haven't watched it since 2015, but um, mm -hmm. a lot of these shows, you won't notice much of a difference in the crowd reaction if they do go to the performance That's true. center and there's no crowd. <laughs> it's true. It is true, man. I, 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 when, it, it's more jarring, though, guys, when you go back and you watch uh, other companies in the 90s and then you go forward. And watch what something. What the companies, Dan? All of them, Harry, not just WCW. <laughs> okay? I'm going through all the companies chronologically on the WWE Network, and I started at when the Monday Night Wars started. Um, so ECW, uh, Smoky Mountain, if it's on there, although at this point they're gone. But anybody mm -hmm. who's chronologically there, I will put it on and watch it in the order of dates. But it is jarring, absolutely jarring to go back and watch that even in the smallest ECW shows, to hear the reactions of the crowd and then watch something that's happening today, even compared to an AEW crowd, it's just like, hello, are you there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Nobody reacts anymore. Um, developing story out of um, Oklahoma, o Oklahoma City during the Thunder Jazz game. Players walk out of the arena before the game begins. Illness before the game caused the delay. We're working on further instructions from the NBA. That's what they said. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it sounds great. Oh, yeah. Well, we welcome to our home. Uh, yeah, I see the picture, yeah. yeah um, so, how's Scott Steiner doing? Oh, I don't... Uh, from, from what I understand, uh, Harry, I'm sorry. Um, He's doing fine. He's doing, uh, he's doing much better. Uh, oh, you, good. Yeah, you heard Dan. He was uh he collapsed uh in the locker room at a TNA show, and he was taken out and uh, on a stretcher. Uh, apparently, he's doing he's doing fine, doing see, much better. See what his wife has to say. Uh, he uh first of all, I want to thank everyone at Impact Wrestling for taking such great care. Uh, let me read this. Where did it go? There it is. You want me to read it down, or are you no, just going to... I got it. Cobb <laughs> County EMTs, she thanks everybody. We appreciate the well wishes, thoughts, and prayers. He'll make 100% recovery. I don't know what that said. Because all I know is um, Scott uh, D'Amour tweeted something mm. as if to say, keep him in your prayers. It doesn't look good. And then everybody was like, whoa. <laughs> 
hold the hell on a second. He's fine. <laughs> and of course, everybody made the jokes about how, you know, uh, Roy will catch up with you without knowing what the hell's going on. So I still don't know what's going on. But from his wife, she said he's going to be fine. So, yeah. He's probably been on the on the roids longer than you've had the beaters. So like, I don't know, have the both, beaters. You're, you're both good. So who who can really say anymore now? I don't have the beaters. <laughs> you're getting defensive again, Dan. Uh, one thing, just just, just to backtrack a, a minute back to the um, the uh, well known alcoholic beverage virus. Um, <laughs> Uh, a, a story that Vince Russo told a while back about when he was sick, when he worked at WWE. And, oh, I can't wait for this one. Vince, uh, Vince was, um, this is something that if WrestleMania was to get cancelled or even in this discussions, Vince uh, probably says this. But um, he was saying how he was sick. You know, he was like literally on death's door sick. And um, Vince didn't know what, what was wrong with him. And he, he looked at him and he was like, what's wrong with you? He's like, well, I'm sick. He's like, there is no sick. I imagine that, that that would be Vince's answer to um, to the coronavirus that there is no sick. Yeah, I, I'm and I'm, the idea of uh, of canceling WrestleMania or postponing it is the his last uh, resort, something he he'd never want to do. So I'm sure he he's going with the the there is no sick for as long as he possibly can. Uh, before he's a, he is in that regard he is a lot like our current United States president more than anything uh, that <laughs> well, they are besties after all aren't they they are um, they they follow the same protocol and the same you know uh, no yeah, bad press is, is press and you know nepotism yeah, I, I, and everything I tell you I did see something in the press earlier that I think you shared it down and then I commented them it was about that you get uh, I think seven grand for um, a willingly uh, accepting yes. the virus. Yeah, yeah. Now, I would actually amend that to where I would donate a tremendous amount of my blood for, uh, let's say, half of that. Because, uh, as I said earlier, you know, my blood is, blood is the key. Yep, yeah. See, Craig, the end, getting that, that quote. But um, What is it called? What? What's his blood's what? I know I wasn't paying attention. My blood is the key, Dan. Um, I'm, I'm sure my With me being immune to all known viruses, I mean, uh, all known diseases, it, it could not only help the coronavirus. I mean, it could um, help Mark Angel with his Mark disease. Um, you know, uh, help Jimmy Lyon with his uh, uh, redneck disorder. Uh, I think who else do I, who else do I want to bury today? I don't know, but it could help you. It definitely help you with the beaters. Dan. I don't have beaters. Uh, but yeah, um, seven grand to willingly take that that um, the virus and. There was a part of me that sort of said, look, you know, uh, gimmick aside, joking aside, fun little catchphrase aside, uh, I genuinely recover from things incredibly quickly. That's what aids on these funny little ha -has. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I genuinely believe I could actually um, somehow be a contributing factor towards helping with that because I heal. I've had pneumonia three times when I was a kid. Four. Yeah. Eight and twelve. And yeah. yeah, that's my wonderful Hall of Fame ring. So what? Um, I had fifth disease, pussy. You have one now. I had fifth disease when I was a kid. You pussy. What, what was the beatus? Your fifth disease you ever had? No, I don't have the beatus. <laughs> well, you might have had it then if it was your fifth. No, disease. I was a beat. <laughs> now let's let's move on because you know I'm I'm just getting upset. I can't get that seven grand for at least a month. Why not? Go ahead. Go for it. Well, no, I was about to add on to what you were saying. I've always had... You add on, Dan. Thank you. I, I'm going to. I've always had a a good immune system. I, I don't get sick. I, I do get sick, but it's on a very rare occasion where I get very, very sick. Uh, my allergies have uh, gotten worse as I've gotten older, but flu, colds, um, very rare. So that's why I was saying, like, I'm more worried for other people. Like, Dean? Uh, no, I'm not worried about Dean. He's got a great immune system, too, and he's not hes not even 40 yet. It might be 40. I don't remember. I believe he's 83. He's not hes not 83. Yeah, at all. 84, then. Uh, maybe 81. Okay, 81. That's something we can agree on. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm going to tell him you said that. I'm going to tell you, we got the recording, buddy. Well, all right. gentlemen and gentlemen, uh, it is time to step back into the wave machine 
back to uh, some would call the good old days. Uh, some would call it the golden age. Some would call or, it the stone uh, age. Yes. Uh, but we're going to go back to a time when uh, territories ruled uh, the world of the sport we both love. Back when you could, uh, one association's wrestler could appear on another company's wrestling card and there would be no fear of reprisal or no controversy. Back when titles were actually called belts and back when sports entertainment was called professional wrestling. This, gentlemen and gentlemen, is called The Wrestling Historian. Uh, we're going to look back on March 6th. Uh, not a lot happened uh, that day uh, wrestling-wise. We're just going to um, recognize some of our uh, rest professional wrestling personalities. On March 6th, uh, two guys that um, had big runs in the uh, WWE. And some say they underachieved or they may have overachieved. But uh, March 6th uh, was the 46th birthday of uh, Anthony Corelli, or if you know him as Santina Morella. And on that same day, turning 44, was a guy that I was really high on. And the WWE was really high on. The Vince McMahon was really high on. But for whatever reason, uh, or there may have been reasons, but uh, just never panned out. Uh, happy belated 44th birthday to Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> Kennedy. Kennedy. Uh, and as luck would have it, his real name actually worked out just as well for him. Uh, born Ken Anderson. Anderson. Anderson, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but he, he was a guy that I really liked, uh, the WWE really liked. Uh, he won King, he won Money in the Bank um, legitimately. Uh, but de depending on who you talk to, he either couldn't stay healthy or rub the wrong people the wrong way. Uh, of all people, I think he when he returned, his last return to the WWE, he uh, injured Randy Orton, who was in turn for a big push, and that kind of killed his uh, – Last and Randy Orton is someone who's been on the outs with WWE for most of his career. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but of all people, Randy Orton was the one that, it, depending on who you ask, is what caused uh, Mr. Kennedy his job. Now, Ken, Mr. Anderson will tell you that it was Triple H who didn't like the fact that he was getting over quicker than he should, didn't like him ch chewing gum coming to the ring. Uh, but really, the guy who spits water, okay, yeah, but uh. That was that. There you go. But I was a big fan of uh, of Ken Kennedy. Uh, remember, uh, the, uh, remember yeah. when he just real quick. Remember when he um, first got released, and there was rumors that this or the, so and so happened, and this happened, and it was oh, it's actually because uh, Kennedy injured Randy or Randy Orton, or there was that, and then there was the rumor that he was injured. Remember that? Yeah. And then he came out with a YouTube video that's still up where he goes, he goes like this with his hands. He tests the other hand and then he shakes the other hand and then shakes the other because they said it was like a wrist injury or something. Uh -huh. and then he shook both hands like this and went. You can do that with your legs, Dan. <laughs> I'm doing it with my legs. You just can't see it. Well, when he won Money in the Bank, he was injured because that's how he he became he the injured. first person to lose the money. He put his Money in the Bank uh, contract up against Edge. And uh, he lost, and Edge would go on to cash it against uh, John Cena to start his uh, title reign. One last question for you, Craig. Yeah. Uh, as the fire trucks uh, come to take us away, mm -hmm. <laughs> overrated, or do you think it's deserved, or does it? What do you think of uh, Kenny? Because I like the guy, and I, I, I love the guy. I don't think he was overrated. I think he was as good. Uh, he. The push he got was warranted. He came in, uh, gangbusters, you know, pinned Booker T, pinned RVD. He was the last man to uh, the last uh, Eddie Guerrero's last match. That's right, yeah. Um, and he they, they, he was going on that he pinned five former world champions, and he was he was that damn good. He was he reminded me he MJF kind of reminded me of him in that. 
He had the swagger. He was great on the mic. He had a great look. He got heat, instant heat. Yeah. Uh, even after the 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 Kennedy Kennedy thing, he never broke character. Even when he was outside the ring, you know, never smiled. Even when he got his picture taken with fans, he always had that same scowl on his face. And uh, I I don't think he was I don't think he was uh, overrated at all. Um, I sorry he never got a chance to. I think he would have been when he. Back then, when you won Money in the Bank, that meant that the company saw you as a future world champion, as a guy that could carry the company even just for a little bit. Um, so I, I I put him in a Dolph Ziggler rank, uh, a, a guy that can do it all, just never got the run that he really deserved. Um, so, yeah, so happy belated birthday, Kennedy, and, of course, Santino, the Milan Miracle. On um, that same day as we celebrate the birth of two uh, WWE superstars that may or may not have achieved their, uh, uh, their, their total potential, we say goodbye to two people. On that same date, uh, 2004, we had to uh, say goodbye to Ray Fernandez, who you we know as Hercules Hernandez. That's right. Who died at 46, uh, the young age of 46, through uh, heart failure. And uh, three years later, March 6, 2007, we said goodbye to one of the great heels and one of the le legitimate tough guys in professional wrestling history. Uh we lost Bad News Brown. Oh, Bad that's news. right. Yeah. Alan Coage. Um, and he uh, died at, at the age of 63. He has a long life. But what many people don't realize, uh, he got probably his biggest name in the WWE in the late uh, 80s or early 90s as Bad News Brown. Uh, and he had great title matches against Hulk Hogan and against Randy Savage. And he had a few with the big boss man, the, the Harlem Sewer Rats and the uh, what have you. But uh, he was when he during that time when he was with the WWE, he was 45 years old. Oh, wow. You know, he was. Uh, and what people don't know about um, Alan uh, Coage, that he uh, not only being a legitimate tough guy, he was a gold medalist in the Pan American Games, and he won the bronze medal in, in the 1972 Olympics in judo. Jeez. He I was a, he that. was a bronze medalist in the Olympics. He won the bronze medal in judo in 1972. The only – he's one of only eight Americans to ever medal in judo, and he's the only American Jeez. heavyweight to ever win a gold uh, – win a medal – in judo in the olympics in the history ever since judo has been an olympic sport since 1964 only eight americans have won medals and alan bad news brown is the only american heavyweight to win a medal in judo in the olympics and that was in 1972 and he was main eventing in the wwf in 1988 wow so yeah i did not know was, that Always in shape. You probably know uh, of his uh, run-in with uh, Andre the Giant. Um, <laughs> challenged Andre, challenged Andre to a fight. They were on a bus somewhere, and Andre told a uh, considered a racist joke. And uh, in the Andre was in the back of the bus because they had the most leg room. And uh, Bad News Brown looked back and said, "Yo, Andre, you know, you know, watch him out." And Andre kind of shoved them off and. Alan got up on the about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh when they got off the bus, uh Alan went right up to him and um Jesus. told him to watch his mouth and told him to uh apologize. Um the the story had taken on urban legend like that it was in the a locker room in Madison Square Garden and where uh bad news challenged Andre to a fight and Hogan being the craven coward that he is ran to get help because he figured anyone who challenged Andre to a fight must have a gun or knife or something. Um, but that wasn't the case. Uh, it was on a, on a bus and uh, Andre made a joke. Bad news didn't like it. He asked Andre, he told Andre about it, asked Andre to apologize. Andre wouldn't do it. So bad news got into his face. The next day, Andre went to his hotel room, knocked on the door and apologized. But uh, bad news Brown, Alan Coage didn't take 
S from anyone, <laughs> and even if it was Andre the Giant, um, he was he was that kind of guy. But uh, he uh, died in uh, '63, which is still young. But for the amount of uh, and he was also you know he Bret Hart, Jake Roberts, and uh, Junkyard Dog, Sylvester Ritter, they were all part of the Stampede North American uh, Stu Hearts found a um, wrestling organization. That's where they all met. Uh, so what people don't know in uh, the WrestleMania 4, the Battle Royal, uh, the um, last three men in the Battle Royal were Junkyard Dog, Bret Hart, and Bad News Brown. That's right. That started together. That was kind of Vince's nod to, uh, to Stu. And how those three guys started their career together, but they were the last three men in the uh, WrestleMania uh, four battle royal. Yeah, that it was, was really by... nice of you, Vince. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> won by uh, bad news. Uh, Brett was the last man, and that's what turned Bret Hart face uh, when he uh, when bad news turned on him, and bad news won the battle royal, and Brett came in the ring and broke bad news battle royal trophy and. Brett became a face for the first time because of bad news. Because of bad news Brown. Nice. So bad news Brown, long storied history in, in professional wrestling, but we had to say goodbye to him March 6, 2007. Uh, staying on birthdays, March 7th. Uh, happy belated birthday. Happy belated 67th birthday to uh, one of the great characters in professional wrestling. Uh, I don't know if you would call him a great mind, but uh, he's got a long storied history in the business wow. in many, uh, but 67, happy belated 67th birthday to Bruce Pritchard. Ah. Uh. Uh, uh, de depending, <laughs> if you listen to Bruce long enough, he'll tell you he invented the wheel, but at the same he time, he, he? <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, a part of many uh, great uh, moments in wrestling history in WWF, WWE. Uh, he was there. Yeah, the Montreal Screwjob, the Monday Night Wars. Uh, he was. He was there. <laughs> he was there. Whether or not how much input he had, depending on who you ask. If you listen to Jim Cornette, that's one thing. If you listen to Bruce, that's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, he was there, oh, and of course we can't. If he just did brother love, I was hoping you if, would mention that. <laughs> if that for those of you who don't know, HIAC Talk Radio listeners, uh, if you remember brother love, if you were a wrestling fan of a certain age, Bruce Pritchard is brother love. Was brother love? Uh, will always be brother love. All will always be brother brother love. The uh, red faced uh, heel. Um, personality whose uh, face was as red as his shirt that he wore. Uh, again, this was another one of Vince's ideas. He uh, Something he saw that got to him, the televangelist craze, just like uh, he didn't like his, his dentist. So next thing you know, there's an Isaac Yankum character. He thought his neighbors were very snobby towards him since he uh, when he bought his big house in Connecticut. And his neighbors looked down upon him because he was in the wrestling business. So that's where the Hunter Hearst Helmsley character came from. Uh, he uh, thought uh, Hulk Hogan's daughter, Brooke, couldn't sing. So that's why Jillian Hall was a bad singer with blonde hair. So <laughs> a Brother Love was the first of his characters that he saw somewhere else and just thought it would, you know, <laughs> would resonate with professional wrestling fans just because Vince thought it was something. Just to uh, jump in there, Craig, did I ever tell you of the uh, similar character that I actually invented? No, what's that? Oh, uh, it was actually a, a large man with, um, you know, terrible circulation and uh, trouble walking. I actually, <laughs> I actually named him B. Eatus. Ah. <laughs> that okay. one was for Justin America. <laughs> there you go, Justin. Mr. America, if you will. At least he spells it right. Yeah. Uh, on that, though, that was happy belated birthday, Bruce Pritchard. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> wrap it up. Uh, March 7th. I'll stay on March 7th. 1967. Uh, March, a very interesting match took place in Tokyo, Japan. The NWA International Heavyweight Champion, Giant Baba, 
took on the WWF heavyweight champion Bruno San Martino. Oh, wow. They went to a two out of three falls match. And the first two falls, they each won a fall, but it took about half an hour. Uh, They both won. uh, Baba and Bruno both won a fall. And so they went to the third fall, all tied up. And a third fall went to the 60-minute time limit. So it was called a draw. So they had a two out of three fall match that Jesus went 90 minutes. Christ. 90 minutes uh, between Giant Baba and Bruno San Martino. Yeah, let's bring the old de- days back, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but the fans in Japan, um, and this match got, was on the, uh, the, on the front page of uh, the Japanese newspapers in. It got unreal television views. I mean, I, I talked about the late, great Ricky Dozan and the numbers he got. Yeah. Uh, so, wrestling in Japan was... so I And you can bet that, that where that match took place in Tokyo, it was sold out, and those that crowd did not leave in the whole 90 minutes. They were there. Uh, but, yes, Giant Baba and Bruno Sammartino with 90 minutes, March 7th, 1967. Two out of three falls. Draw. Hot damn. Uh, March 7th, 1982, um, in the NWA slash AWA territory of Toronto. Now, Toronto was one of those great wrestling spots like St. Louis, uh, where the WWF, the NWA, and the AWA all ran major cards. And on this date, March 7th, 1982, they had a Cadillac tournament where the winner would win a brand new Cadillac. And what made this tournament interesting is that they had wrestlers from the AWA, the NWA, Florida, and Memphis in this tournament. You had the current AWA Tag Team Champions, Jesse the Body Ventura and Adrian Adonis. The AWA Tag Team Champions were both in this tournament. Austin Idol from Memphis defeated Jake the Snake Roberts in this tournament. Jake was wrestling in Florida at the time. Ricky Steamboat defeated Roddy Piper in this tournament. They were both wrestling wow. in the NWA at this time. Wow. And the finals were um, – Ricky Steamboat actually won to get in the finals, but Roddy Piper attacked him and rendered – and so Ricky couldn't compete. So in the finals of the Cadillac tournament, two of the most colorful characters in professional wrestling history went down to the finals. So handsome Jimmy Valiant. Defeated yeah. Jesse, defeated Jesse the Body Ventura. What? <laughs> to win the Cadillac tournament in Toronto, what? to win a brand new Cadillac. Yes. <laughs> okay. Why not? Yeah. Hold but, on. Can uh, I interrupt yeah. for a second, just for a quick second? Are you watching this team right now? Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> well, imagine that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But uh, March seventh, nineteen eighty two. In uh, Toronto, Canada, you had AWA, NWA, Memphis, Fl- Championship Wrestling from Florida, Mid-Atlantic, all on the same card. Now, I jokingly said, uh, when you mentioned the 90-minute match, like, oh, see, you want the old days back again? I do miss, I do regret not being alive long enough to where I could have seen NWA or WCW and the WWF and the other companies at the same card not just for like a charity or because somebody died or just just because there was a match to like a show to book. I do regret yeah. not being able to see that. That part's awesome because you would have to probably hold a gun to his head and probably kill Vince uh, <laughs> before he would do his show uh, with AEW. Um, yeah. So for him to even yeah for him to even recognize any other yeah organization so that that is kind of that's a bummer because the the cards you can put on if you just once a year be like you know what let's let's do something for everybody eh, you know politics yeah. bureaucratic mm-hmm. and that's... yeah and yeah and and uh you know vince's dad was a guy that it went with handshake deals one of the things that because i was alive to remember it back then uh, wrestling in Madison Square Garden, I would do whatever I can. And there was no cable. There was no internet. There was no you know, wrestling dirt sheets to do what I can to find out what happened in Madison, in Madison Square Garden every month. Because in Madison Square, it back, it back then, there was a 
card every month in Madison Square Garden. Hell yeah. And what made them special wasn't just the championship match, who the champion was going to go up against, either Bruno or, or Bob Backlund, or Superstar. It was who was going to show up. Because every month in Madison Square Garden, you didn't know if it was going to be someone from the NWA. You didn't know if it's going to be somebody from Championship Wrestling from Florida, from World Class. I mean, you go a, a Madison Square Garden card could have Harley Race on it. A Madison Square Garden card could have uh, Austin Idol and Tommy Rich on it. It could have Kevin Von Erich or one of the Von Erichs on it. Um, you you just never Dusty Rose could show up out of nowhere. Uh, Madison Square Garden cards were, and I. I wanted to talk to, to Preston, our favorite radio announcer, about it. He grew up in St. Louis, and St. Louis was the same way. St. Yeah. Louis was the headquarters of the NWA. That's and right. And St. Louis wrestling card could have the WWF champion on it and the NWA champion on it at the same time. I wonder if he's aware. Because he said, I, I know he said in passing when he was real young, he used to watch it. And so he would have been in St. Louis at the time. I'm sure he's seen stuff. He can't even recall at this point. Well, he, he he does when we have talked about it, he said he remembered just hating Ric Flair. That's and all Ric that, Flair, oh, good enough yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah. Just because he always just thought <laughs> Flair was a dick. But it's like but Ric Flair didn't wrestle in St. Louis regularly. That was not his home base. If yeah. Preston saw Ric Flair wrestle in St. Louis, it was because that was part of the expansion of how and the NWA would send its biggest and brightest to St. Louis. Which goes to show you, he's not aware of what he actually saw. No. <laughs> That's amazing. No, he, he really isn't. That's amazing. Oh, you've explained it to him. Like, you, you don't understand. You've actually seen something that's rare. And you yes. remember that. that you, and, and Ric Flair is the one you hated so much that all these years later, you barely saw him in the area at the time. You're like, I hate that little riffer. <laughs> yeah. You thought, yeah. And, but uh, St. Louis was the... Uh, was the, uh, the the proving ground uh, because back in the NWA, and I've said this many times on this very podcast, was the bl- largest wrestling organization in the world. So not just in the United States, but in Japan. So much so that the WWF was a member of the NWA. Yeah. So the WWF champion, and when you were WWF champion, you had to wrestle in St. Louis. There was one of your commitments to the NWA was that the W that the WWF champion would have to appear in St. Louis. And when they were picking, when the NWA was picking future world champions, it was how they played in St. Louis. That's why you had Ric Flair who wrestled in the Mid-Atlantic come to St. Louis. Why David Von Erich and all the Von Erichs had to go through St. Louis. Um, that's why I mentioned the Missouri State Heavyweight Championship. That's who they, when you looked at, is for a future world champion. That's why David Von Erich got to run with it. That's why Kerry Von Erich got to run with it. That's why Ric Flair got to run with it. Um, Bob Backlund, Ted DiBiase, all held. If you went through the, that was part of your training to be a future NWA champion or even a future world champion. Um, like I said, Bob Backlund was a Missouri State champion before he was a WWF heavyweight champion, just to see how he does in the home office, the the uh, the backyard of the NWA in St. Louis. Wow! But Toronto was an, Toronto was another. It was Toronto, St. Louis, Madison Square Garden were the only places. Sometimes in Houston, because Paul Bosch had such a huge, uh, uh, was a huge uh, figure in professional wrestling, and all the wrestling organizations loved him. Uh, and and Portland. That, that's it. I'm getting like a Monty Python sketch. It was just those two. And then the third one. And, and then the, the fourth one. Three. Three. Oh, four. Three. <laughs> but, but for this edition of Wrestling Historian, uh, the Toronto Cadillac Tournament was another example of uh, different – you can – on one card, you can have three different – three to five different wrestling organizations represented in one card. Uh, March 8th, 1996, uh, the ECW Big Ass Extreme Bash. I pointed this out because on that card, um, Chris Jericho defeated Cactus Jack in their first and only meeting. Uh, Cactus Jack, or Mick Foley, has put out in his book very definitively that he's never defeated Chris Jericho in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Uh, but they only wrestled once as Cactus Jack, and he wrestled. I 
don't think they, I think they wrestled one more time at mankind as mankind. I think so. But yeah, but the only time Cactus Jack had ever or Mick Foley had ever defeated Chris Jericho was when he was voted into the uh, WWE Hall of Fame and uh, pointed out to Chris Jericho that he's never beaten him. So Chris Jericho came up. Cactus dropped the elbow. CM Punk ran out the audience and counted the three count. So <laughs> Mick Foley defeated Chris Jericho. But their first and only meeting as Cactus Jack took place March 8th, 1996. Right here in Philadelphia, the Big Ass Extreme Bash. Uh, March 9th, a couple of other birthdays. Um, a happy belated 60th birthday to Scott Simpson. Not that Scott Simpson, the <laughs> one we all know as Nikita Koloff. So Nikita Koloff turned 60. Uh, at the height of his uh, popularity when he first broke in, uh, now Scott Simpson, we know, uh, is from Minnesota, uh, just like the, the Road Warriors and Crusher Darso and Rick Rude. They all came in the same area. They all broke in at the same time. But uh, Nikita Koloff, uh, the Russian Nightmare, when he debuted, may have been the uh, most amazing uh, rookie uh, that the NWA had ever seen, certainly that I had ever seen. Right. Um, and he was just a raw, uh, just the Russian Road Warrior, he was called. Uh, but he was only, uh, he's only 25. Uh, raw as hell. And uh, he had potato shots to prove it. Um, Head really wasn't right because he was got a huge push and getting NWA championship matches against Ric Flair. Again, he's only 25, only been in the business less than a year. And uh, in the main event against the Rock and Roll Express uh, and against the Road Warriors and against Dusty Rhodes. And, of course, the tragic accident with Magnum TA. Oh, that's right. Um, it forced him to, uh, to turn face. Uh, and... The uh, Dusty and Nikita sold out arenas all over, especially when they came here to Philly, um, just to uh, put them in the stratosphere. But uh, turned 60 years old. That same day, I didn't know these guys shared the same birthday, but he's only two years younger than him. Uh, happy belated 58th birthday to the dog faced gremlin. Ah, uh, Rick. Rick Steiner. Who yep. didn't go to the hospital. Who did not go to the hospital. <laughs> I believe he would go to what is known, uh, what you're commonly um, familiar with, Dan, when having medical issues, is known as a vet. The vet, yes, yeah. he would go to the vet. Correct. Much yeah. like you do. No, I, sure. <laughs> take, I, I, they have better drugs, man. Yeah. Take you to the vet. Well, wow. Another. Yeah. Um, have some Tommy Boy. Thank you. Um, <laughs> on that same date, uh, March 9th, nineteen ninety-one, on his twenty-ninth birthday. <sighs> Uh, the aforementioned Rick Steiner and his brother Scott defeated the Freebirds for the NWA Tag Team Championship. Um, after that, though, the uh, they would later be known as the WCW Tag Team Champions. What? But, uh, WCW? <laughs> yeah, they would change the name. But the interesting about this title win, Dan, for the Steiners, the Steiners defeated the Freebirds for the NWA Tag Team title and a uh, and a tele in a television match for a TV taping. The thing is, um, the Freebirds hadn't won the title yet. Oh, the Freebirds would win the tag team championship from Doom at a uh, WCW pay per view that would take place later on that month. Yeah. So the Freebirds NWA tag team title reign actually had negative uh, days on it. But uh, the uh, signers would win the NWA tag team title on this date, and we wouldn't see them win the tag team titles until this that title match aired weeks later on TV. And uh, we talked earlier about um, what if uh, a big event was canceled, uh, if WrestleMania or any of these uh, live shows were canceled. We'll have an well, update on, on that uh, before the end of the show, by yeah. the way. But uh, March 9th, 2001, uh, the ECW officially canceled the Living Dangerously pay-per-view. And it was kind of easy to see why, because uh, no venue was booked. Yeah. 
Uh, there was no TV to promote the pay-per-view, <laughs> and obviously no tickets were available. Yeah. Couple that with the fact that Paul Heyman, the president of ECW, was uh, currently the color commentator on Raw. So um, there was just three hours of pay-per-view time that was just there, and some uh, cable networks uh, aired – the last ECW pay-per-view, Guilty as Charged, in, in its place, but um, for all intents and purposes, that was the um, that was March 9, 2001, signaled the end of ECW. We were talking earlier about the sounds of uh, crowds at wrestling shows today's versus uh, today's. I just pluraled it. Definitely from Philly. Put a plural on everything. Like my dad calls, he goes, I'm going to Aldi's. No, Dad, you're going to Aldi. <laughs> you're not going to Aldi's. You're not getting shrimps at Aldi's. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we're talking about uh, reaction, crowd reactions today versus uh, the uh, in the past. There's one I'll never forget. When that dude showed up on Raw, all of a sudden, like, yeah. wait a second, what? <laughs> and it was at that point that I knew. Much like in 1999 when Jericho showed up and 2000s when the Radicals showed up, the WCW was WCW. dead. Yeah. <laughs> when Paul showed up on Raw, I was like, well, that's over. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I saw Mike Awesome show up on WCW, that was like, well, uh, isn't he the ECW champion? I don't see ECW. Uh... Oh, God. Two weeks in a row, we're going to have to. <sighs> that what a, what a blunder. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, the and ECW at that time hadn't run any events in a month. Yeah, so um, that was kind of like the uh, and they didn't uh, ECW didn't officially announce that they were in until uh, until April. But um, the uh, to the, March ninth, two thousand one, was when ECW officially uh, canceled the uh, Living Dangerously uh, pay per view, which kind of signaled the end of. Uh, ECW, and uh, I hate to end on a down note, but um, not, oh, why not? This is just the, kind, the kind of week we had. Uh, March tenth, uh, two thousand and seven. We said goodbye. You know, we we talked about um, we had to say goodbye to Rocky Johnson earlier um yeah. this month. Um, and we talked about uh the black wrestlers and uh, yeah, Mark Henry even very eloquently put it back. In the day where there was only one, you, you know, some territories only had one. You only had one, you know, you had one black baby face. And yeah. it, for the most part, in the sixties and seventies, it was Rocky Johnson. Uh, well, if there was only one black heel. Uh, it was this man. And in two thousand seven, we had to say goodbye to Ernie Ladd. Oh, uh, and another one, he had a long, uh, sixty-eight years old. Uh, but this was a man that. Um, he was the uh, first-round pick in the NFL for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> he played uh, nine seasons for the Chiefs, and uh, between the Chiefs and the Chargers. He was voted to the San Diego Chargers Hall of Fame. He's in the National College Football Hall of Fame. Um, some will call him the greatest player ever in the history of Grambling, one of the great uh, uh, HCBU historical black colleges and universities. Uh, and for that alone, uh, he, he guess his athletic uh, ability was uh, outstanding. But he uh, was one of the many uh, professional football players that to supplement their income. Because professional football players, Dan, um, back in the day, were only making about thirty-five thousand dollars a year. Jesus being Christ! A professional football for being a, playing in the NFL. I did not know that. So, yes, uh, I mean the NFL. Was put it this way: the NFL was it was such that if you didn't get paid a week or if you felt shorted, you needed to call the uh, uh, the president of the NFL. You had a number on your pay stub. You call it, and Burt Bell, whose office was right down the street from me right now in 30th and Walnut, would pick up the phone. Hello, this is Burt Bell. Uh, yeah, I like talking to him. Yeah, this is him. Oh, I like to talk to the president, the NFL. But yeah, it's me, Burt Bell. Yes. So there was no secretary. There was no – you call that number, Burt Bell picked no up. You were answered. talking to the president of the NFL. Wow. Period. 
Um, so like a lot of wrestlers, a lot, a lot of professional football players, I should say, before him, they moonlit as professional wrestlers. Obviously, you know, uh, the ones we know about, Wahoo McDaniel, but there was uh, Bronco Nagurski uh, and Lewis um, Hardball Haggerty, Alex Karras even wrestled as, uh, you know, of so many. But Ernie took to it, A, because of his incredible uh, athletic ability, and also because Ernie Ladd was a legit six foot nine, three hundred fifteen pound man, <laughs> badass that couldn't, brother ever, <laughs> that could move like a gazelle and was a badass uh, mother ever. Uh, Speak, speaking on that, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm going to let you shine because there's two points I want to bring up, and there's one I'm purposely going to mention because I wanted you to get into that vamp on it. First mm -hmm. one is is one of my favorite stories. Is him. <laughs> Meeting the Briscoes at the back of his car. Yes. <laughs> and beating the hell out of them. <laughs> and stuffing them both and, in his truck. And the best part was, is this some bitch puts them in his trunk, <laughs> drives them to the hospital, and dumps them on the front stoop and says, see you later. And they go in and get stitched up at the ER. I mean, he, I, I, didn't he tie chains or something around his fist yeah, or something? Around, yeah. And, cause it, was a it was a booking issue. And he's yeah. like, uh, you know what? You're going to talk about it? Let's go talk outside. And they met after the show. He's like, I'm a man. I'm going to do this. And he beat the tar out of these guys and chucked and the, him in the car. And the Briscoes were two of legitimate the bad people. Shoot, the bad shooters yeah. that could stretch any normal man <laughs> like to a breaking up. point. And Ernie Ladd, with no wrestling ability at all just beat the living snot out of both briscoes and who were in their prime they weren't they weren't old man these no. were 70s Brit, and he beat them both up and shoved them in his in his trunk of his car and oh my god that's one of the funniest I, things i've ever heard and i wouldn't believe it dan if it hadn't been corroborated by so many reliable sources everybody like, yeah and, and everybody tells the story the same way this is how it yeah. started this is how it happened this is how the fight ended, and this is how they ended up at the hospital. Bing, bang, boom. Yeah. There's very few stories in wrestling that have so many people telling you the same point, so that would be one of them. Yeah. Uh, and but... also, he was a guy that used his power and used his uh, prolificness prolific mm -hmm. uh, for civil rights. Yes. Um, and being a, a black uh, wrestler or being a, a public figure – uh, being black anyway in the 60s, uh, you had a target on your back. So it was not always uh, advantageous for him to be a heel. It's one thing, and this is back before kayfabe, when you were a, a heel wrestler, uh, you, you were taking your life in your hands. Yeah. Uh, the fan, if you got enough heat from the fans, uh, there's obviously, you know, the, the stories are legendary. But for, for Ernie... You know, you have that coupled with um, the racism angle. Uh, he fought for uh, other for black wrestlers to get paid equally. He fought for them to get uh, bigger spots on the cards. People that he liked, he wanted to move forward, like a Rocky Johnson, and uh, like Thunderbolt Patterson. He was uh, very influential in that respect. But at the same time, like I said, when Rocky Johnson was the one black babyface, Ernie would be the one black heel, and uh, they hardly ever were in the same territory at the same time because Ernie wanted Rocky to have his time. Uh, and just he did the same thing for Tony Atlas. He didn't want to overshadow them. And, and when – because he paved the way for guys like Rocky Johnson and like Tony Atlas and like uh, Skip Young uh, and black, black wrestlers that came after him, Brookhouse Brown was another one that uh, Ernie uh, tutored and, and mentored and even did a job for it in the Mid-Atlantic area towards the end of his career. Uh, and Junkyard Dog was another one uh, to make sure that they get the shine, you know, from him. Even if it meant when Ernie was a booker in Mid-South, um, get, to get Junkyard Dog over as, uh, as over as he was. And it was Ernie Ladd who said yes to Ted DiBiase when – Ted, I think I told you the story when I asked Ted DiBiase himself about um, how'd you turn heel. He said, I got, I rest in 30 minutes every night 
you know, against Dick Slater, against Paul Orndorff, and sweat my ass off. And Junkyard Dog walks in the ring, you know, shakes the ropes, wrestles five minutes, and gets all the money. Um, so, and Ernie, he knew Ernie Ladd needed a top heel. And so, Ted, Mr. DiBiase, told me, he said, uh, one night I uh, went to uh, Ernie's uh, hotel room and knocked on his door. And I said, Ernie, I found your new heel. And Ernie said, lay it on me, kid. And Ted goes, you're looking at him. And Ted and Ernie paused for a second, looked at Ted, and said, yes, I am. And uh, when Ted DiBiase turned on Junkyard Dog, it was a shot heard around the world and a loaded glove heard around the world. It skyrocketed Ted DiBiase's career. He had been the quintessential white meat baby face. The NWA loved him. Uh, he was in line to be, he was on the short list to be NWA champion along with David Vine Eric and Ric Flair. But when he turned heel, that changed his entire career. And he became a main event heel everywhere he went, all the way to the WWF as a million dollar man. But if it wasn't for Ernie Ladd believing in him and telling him, yes, you turn heel, who knows where Ted DiBiase would have gone and how, what a great heel he turned out to be. But that was the mind of Ernie Ladd. And Jim Cornette was another one that he learned at the feet of Ernie Ladd. And if you ever heard Jim Cornette's Ernie Ladd impression, they're uh, <laughs> classic. Uh, but he shaped so many uh, other wrestlers with his booking ideas and his booking uh, style and getting guys over like Junkyard Dog, like Ted DiBiase, like the Midnight Express, um, like the Rock and Roll Express. He was he was a, a man ahead of his time in terms of wrestling because there were not there were no six foot nine, three hundred fifteen pound men that can move like him. Nope. There was no one that could, could match up with Andre the Giant everywhere. I mean, they their matches, they were when they would have a Superdome card, they flew in Arnie and Andre just to be on that card. Even though they were wrestling in two different territories. They brought him in just to be on that card. In the Shea Stadium, they brought in Andre just for Ernie Ladd, just to be on that card. Uh in in Los Angeles, again, they would go because to sell out their annual battle royal. They would have an annual battle royal in Los Angeles. It was the biggest, the biggest their WrestleMania, and they bring in Ernie and Andre to to main event it because Andre was Ernie was the only one that could go up against Andre like that. They were the only one that was that was his height, his size, and he could talk. Man, the interviews that he would have they were legendary. You get to learn the way because I cover the grounds I walks on. And uh, he was the first heel I ever saw in person um, at the Philadelphia Arena. He was wrestling uh, uh, wow. the Mexican heavyweight champion, Francisco Flores. And I remember I hated Ernie Ladd so much. I was trying to, to learn Spanish in time to tell Francisco to look out for his thumb. And Ernie <laughs> Ladd had this uh, interview with the young Vince McMahon about how I come to Philadelphia. I want everybody in Philadelphia to take, give me complete silence when I walk in that ring. I don't want to hear nobody from nothing. When Ernie Ladd walks in that ring, I went complete silence. And of course, he came down. I was like, BOW! BOW! <laughs> I was like, can my father had to, had, to, had to call me. And, but because my dad remembered him in playing football, he remembered watching him play um, in the AFL. But uh, when Ernie Ladd won the match with both feet on the ropes, on the top rope, and he remember he's six foot nine. Folks, and the referee didn't see it, so of course the, the audience goes crazy. How do you miss it? Six foot nine men with both feet on the top row pinning a man. But um, that was what made Ernie Ladd Ernie Ladd. And um, so many great things about him, but we say goodbye to him uh, March 10th, 2007. Uh, and I'm sorry, this, this edition of Wrestling Historian has been <laughs> filled with us saying goodbye to so many people and celebrating the uh, birth of many people, but not every week is going to be a big week in professional wrestling. This was a down week. Um, I believe this edition of Wrestling Historian is uh, ill, suffering from some um, well known oh, alcoholic virus. It's about to get worse once you shut it <laughs> off. Trust me. Okay, good. But hopefully, uh, the Great One's blood is the key. But that, my friends, is called the Wrestling Historian. Well, in light of that, the episode's about to get even better. <laughs> I'll go to How the much first. How can it get when you're yeah. pointing those damn triple R's at me? <laughs> I mean, look at this finger. Like, I don't know what broke it, but yeah. It, so it looks like an out overgrown triple R. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so, uh, a uh, Craig. Sure. 
Rudy Gobert? Rudy Gobert, yeah. Yeah, Gobert, yeah, okay. Gobert, Utah Jazz All-Star, has yeah. tested positive for coronavirus. Holy S. Oh, it gets better. They went on to the... He was feeling good and strong enough to play, so they freaking started the game, and then the players left the court due to the illness. And guess what the NBA, because of their great decision to go ahead with this game and getting everybody exposed, just did. It's over. The season is over. It's indefinitely suspended. We're done. There's no more NBA. This season is over. Suspended indefinitely. Because they oh. let this man, he tested positive, and he let this man go in front of others <laughs> in a sporting event. This is not the same as what we were talking about earlier, uh, uh, Harry, with, you know, yeah. suspend people, don't touch six people. This is a guy in the locker room with other people with interaction, and they were just like, that's eh, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is fine. Uh, Dan, for the benefit of those of us who are ignorant to this, um, how lo much longer would a season have run? Uh, yeah. 15 games, but we still had the playoffs. Yeah, so, so how long June? In time would that run? June? We were, oh, damn, yeah, that's June. A, yeah. That's, a, that's a, a fair chunk of time. Yeah. So that's over. And also, Trump has implemented a 30-day ban of travel from Europe to the United States starting midnight on Friday, Craig? Uh, Harry? With Harry. the exclusion of the UK. Yeah, with the exclusion of the UK for now. So but I will say, I will say that that is on the sole basis of the fact that I am a Hall of Famer. That is, that is correct. So, uh, also the other bit of news. This is going to be great, Craig. Uh, Tom Hanks has announced that him is, and Rita uh, have uh, coronavirus in Australia. Are you serious? I'm deadly serious. Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson both have the coronavirus. I am deadly serious. Is, is Tom Hanks the one that was in um, Catch Me If You Can? Yes, yes, that would be Tom Hanks. Yeah, he he looked just like um, he looked just like Jim Cornette in that movie. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> Thinner. Yeah. Well, yeah. Obviously, Jimmy wasn't always a uh, large man. Um, you know. Yes, it's on his Twitter, Craig. It's not a it's not a bull crap. It's 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 on there. And screenshot okay. somewhere and, and edited it because you know he dogged his pictures like that. No. He dumped his pictures of his own legs sometimes just to say that he doesn't have the beaters. I'm just letting Craig yeah, I'm, read it. I'm looking at, yeah, I'm yeah. taking it all in now. Wow. So the NBA season is over. Because the NBA, I don't think the NBA, NBA commissioners uh, uh, have been able to make a good decision in what, 20 years now? No. 10 years? Be it's fair. When I really miss, it's when I really miss David Stern because. Yeah. Because he could make good decisions and was a smart person. Yeah. yeah. Dumb asses. I don't believe He's it. He's a big dead end radio as well, you know. That's Howard Stern. Yeah. Oh, okay. Same difference. So, so uh, yeah, this is going to get great. Okay. So, we're going to end on that note. Uh, well, actually, we'll end on this note. You had some words for Chondo, Harry. Why don't you say those so we at least don't end on but, death? See, see it's, it's not just Chondo. I mean, I, I felt like as a somewhat of a, um, a Hall of Fame induction speech, I should give a, as, you know, people to thank because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for uh, Craig or Guns. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else I should thank, but definitely Craig, Amber. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anyone else in the room I should thank. Um, uh, uh, Kelly's probably back there somewhere. I should probably thank her as well, Dan. She keeps you in check. Sure. Uh, Dean, Dean, definitely for, for you know kicking in there at, at whatever seventy, eighty years old. Um, you know, I'm sure even the the elephant in the room, or rather the um, you know the uh, uh, how how do you put it? The uh, not the organ grinder, but the monkey. Uh, the only man small enough that he's just a little bit bigger than Hornswoggle. I should probably even thank that dummy for, um, you know, being a negative part of my life to which I overcome constantly. Uh, just in America, you know, there's, there's many other people who shall remain nameless just because I've forgotten their name. Dan, I should probably even thank you because if you weren't a neckbearded Mark, then uh, I probably wouldn't have uh, been here three times, two of which added up to, well, I don't know, I think they're the only three times I've been here this year. But so far, I think I'm uh, three times more than any other guest, so that makes me the... You're the uh, only. Well, Gator so far, and Lolo. That means, Gator and Lolo. Uh, uh, well, so far, that means that I am the um, 
top contender for the 2020 guest of the year, but obviously there's plenty of time. I'm not sure if the coronavirus would stop these people coming on to the show, but we'll have to wait and see. Well, no, that would be the only way. I I mean, I'm I'm sure I could um, pay someone to contaminate people, much like I'm trying to pay someone to contaminate a dummy that uh, I once got hit with a chair. Sure. Um, Because, you know, he he, uh, was attempting basic math and he couldn't even get Steiner math right, so... Um, but yeah, leading on to my dear friend Chando. Oh, again, fuck you, Mark Angel, for leaving the day that I get there. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, Dan. I said that magical word that I'm not meant to say. Mark Angel. Yeah, I'll stop saying Mark Angel. Um, I'll, start saying Mark, I'll start saying Mark with a K instead. That's better. Uh, that, that's better. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, but Mark with a K. Yeah. You're done wrong now. Uh, I'm not making I'm not making anything for you now, let alone a pop that you've um, wanted me to make you for, uh, I'd say, six years, but I've known you since you're the oldest six-year-old. But now you're, you literally look like a really, really old 12-year-old. Uh, Chando said he actually looked like a really, really old baby, but Chando sucks because uh, it is day 14 of 14. I've passed through those two weeks that that dummy uh, actually said that I would not get through without my shoes falling apart. It's two weeks. It's two weeks, and I also can take one of my ears off because um, it doesn't feel good with two earphones on. I have a weird OCD thing about that. But yeah, Chando, we're about three weeks away from me uh, climbing the top rope of the uh, of the H two O ring, jumping off and stamping on your feet, and that's not going to happen because I'm scared of heights. But I'm still going to stamp from the ground onto your stupid redneck feet. You're going to cry your eyes out like the time that Dan first realized how painful the beatus is. I'm going to stamp on your feet. And then when I've done that, I'm going to stamp on your other foot. And then you're going to realize why you shouldn't doubt a Hall of Famer. Because I'm, when I put my, my all into something, whether that's podcasting, whether that's 3D printing, whether that is being a Hall of Famer caliber guest, Or even donating my blood, which is the key, by the way, Craig, to medical science to show that not only am I immune to all known diseases, but I can help mankind to be immune to all known diseases. But once any of that is done, I am just the the greatest of the great. It's not just a thing for T-shirts. It's not just a thing for names, for, for social media to look cool when people follow me. Everything I say is the truth. And I, I've, I've just shown you, I dare you to try and prove me wrong, because 14 days have passed. My feet are still in one piece. My shoes are still in one piece. And well, you owe me an apology. And I, I would have had Dan's just sitting there nice and quiet. I would have had Dan go and, and bring you on for these last few minutes to get my apology right here, right now. But you know, I want this, um, I want this apology to just last throughout time. You know, th- this apology is going to be here long after Craig is no longer the star of the Craig Lagan show, which is going to be for a very long time because he's a big deal. This apology is going to long- last long after Dean is gone from this world because he's really old, but I know he's going to last until a really, really old age. And this show is going to, uh, this show, this apology is going to last a lot longer than Mark Angel being a Mark. But, oh, wait, no, no, it's not, because Mark's always going to be a Mark, uh, whether, <laughs> Russell, whether he's going to WrestleMania or not. But the fact of the matter is, you owe me an apology. You owe an apology to me. I don't care whether it comes on Facebook, whether it comes live at the uh, h 2 Wrestle Center, the Kevin Hogan Memorial Hall. I don't care if it's um, in front of a crowd of quarantined coronavirus uh, sufferers, which I apologize, Dan's probably going to have to edit that word out because it is a famous, well-known alcoholic beverage disease, aka virus. But the fact of the matter is, Chando, you owe me an apology and I'll be waiting for it. I'll be sleeping at nighttime with my Hall of Fame ring here. (laughs) I'll be eating my cookies. I may even go to work tomorrow and just wait for my apology. If I don't go to work, I'll just tell them I have coronavirus. They'll let me off. I mean, I don't even have to say that. I could just not go to work and say, hey, I just felt like taking a nap. But I'll still be waiting for my apology. But until then, 
I mean, this is the trilogy of my appearances right here on the Craig Lagan show. I don't know when I'll be back. I, I mean, I've, I've got I've got sleep to catch up on. I mean, uh, this is three shows that I could have been sleeping during. So who knows when I'll be back? Who knows if I'll upset Dan next week and, and I'll uh, claim I'm never coming back on the show again. Um, and your friends will tweet if... you and go, yeah, you shouldn't go back. That show sucks now. <laughs> yeah, I who see you jerk off. The, who knows uh, if the week after, if Craig will find a um, more competent uh, producer to uh, produce the Craig Legan show. Who Not knows if, if Craig will even still be hosting the Craig Legan show next week. Not for free, it could, be, it could be the Amber Legan show. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, I am the great Harry Barnett. I am your only HIC Talk Radio. Hall Not of showing Fame. the picture anymore. It's just out of focus now. <laughs> and that has been me. And, well, Dan's going to say stuff now. And, well, it, it won't mean nearly as much as all the things I just said, even though I don't remember what I said. <laughs> Where can people follow you, Harry? An F Mark, an F Mark Angel. Twitter, Harry. <laughs> yeah. Ter- Twitter. My Twitter, uh, um, The Great HB. People can find me at The Great HB on Twitter, uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash TGHB Entertainment, um, TGHB 3D, TGHB 3D on, on Twitter as well, Instagram, anywhere the TGHB 3D or The Great HB or The Great Harry Potter. This is what happens. I have so many social medias, Dan, and I can't have like. And Craig, I'm not from people, Philly. Craig, I'm not where, from Philly, so I don't just add an S on the end. Craig, but people, I have all these different names on social media just just for my two uh, collective things. But yeah, Craig, where can people find you on social media? Well, thank you, great one. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Craig Lagon, C R A I G. L I double G E O N S. One thing that's not going to be done because of this uh, virus that will not be named is comic books. That keeps going on. And you can find me at my I other podcast so. at Comic Book Gurus, wherever podcasts are sold for free. Amber was so enticed by everything you were saying then. Just her eyes and ears were open. He's a captive audience. Follow me on Twitter, DanLaw83, part of the VOC Nation Radio Network. Search you sound broken, Dan. See, uh, I am. See the uh, search the VOC Nation Radio Network on Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts for all our episodes. I broke down. I deserve a cookie. You, it's got nothing to do with you. You're the least of my problems. Um, yeah, for this Craig is a and Harry, I'm Dan cookie. Uh, uh, Play my Craig, music when we're done. By the way, uh, for Craig and Dan, I uh, no, I'm Dan. For Craig and Harry, <laughs> I'm leaving. Goodbye. <laughs>